How much better is the Noctua NHU-12S in comparison to the Coolmaster Hyper 212 EVO? The parts I'll be using on my test bench are somewhat self-explanatory. They will be the Noctua NHU-12F, the Coolmaster Hyper 212 EVO, thermal pads by Innovation Cooling, the i5 2500K, the ASUS P8Z77V ATX motherboard, a 4x4 gigabyte kit of Corsair LPX memory, Powering the half-death tech station is the EVGA Supernova G3 650 watt gold certified power supply. Quick comparison in the thin stack. The Noctua seems to be a little bit thinner. There's an extra heat pipe on each side for the Noctua, and the base plate looks like it's going to make better contact with the processor on the Noctua. Alright, so we're about to run some serious voltage through this motherboard, 1.5 volts, and it's probably going to creep a little bit higher. So we're going to run it on small FFTs with AVX disabled, and let's go ahead and kick that off now. Take a look at the, uh, the idle attempts, they're getting pretty toasty. Alright, so here we go, we're going to kick it off. Temperatures are going to go up. I hear the fans starting to ramp up. We're getting up into the 80s. I will report back after a legitimate time of stress testing and let's see what happens. All right, so the test has been running. We're reaching 90 Celsius, one or two degrees above 90, 90 Celsius at most. What I'm gonna do now is uninstall the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, install the Noctua NHU-12S and see if it does better. Let's see if we can keep it under 90 degrees Celsius. I just wanted to emphasize that this Noctua NHU-12S is the SE-AM4 version. That means it will only work with AMD processors. In order for me to effectively run these benchmarks and thermal tests, I had to order a separate NM-I115X bracket that will work with Intel platforms.
We won't go into too much detail on the fans other than the fact that Noctua is higher end than the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. The way the fan is designed on the Noctua, it's geared towards static pressure, which is going to most likely yield an improvement in thermals. All right, the Noctua is installed. What's interesting is that the uh, idle temperatures are slightly higher than the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. I took the whole entire heatsink off and reinstalled it just to make sure. And I don't know if that's because the fan is operating at a lower RPM. Uh, but I'm keeping everything the same. The BIOS settings are the same on the motherboard. All I'm doing is swapping out the CPU coolers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up Prime 95 with the same settings, AVX disabled, launch it, stress it, we'll come back in a little bit to see if the temperatures are better and we'll take it from there. Alright, so what's pretty cool is the ambient temperature is a couple of degrees higher than when I ran the Cooler Master Hyper 212 test. That could be why the idle temps on the Noctua NHU-12S was a little bit higher than the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. On top of that, when we stress this CPU cooler out, the temperatures are actually lower than the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo with a higher ambient temperature. The Noctua is able to keep the temps under 90 C at a higher ambient temperature. So clearly the Noctua NHU-12S is the better CPU cooler. And for the money, it better be. This Noctua NHU-12S will eventually be going into the Ryzen R7-1700 build in the upper right hand corner of the screen. In that build, I will be replacing the stock CPU cooler with the NHU-12S and all the stock fans in the Cooler Master N200 case with other Noctua fans to see how much of a difference there are on my CPU and GPU temps. In addition to that, I'll be using the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo inside a Mini ITX server build that will be housed inside the BitPhoenix Phenom Mini ITX case. Consider subscribing to see these upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.